Yes. 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 Hi, everyone, and welcome to Games Hub. It's a crypto talk show with our investors, partners, and remarkable personalities. And this week, we're going to have a very special guest. Uh, so meet Rachel Wolfson. Uh, she's a senior reporter at Cointelegraph, blockchain analyst, public speaker, and author of Bitcoin Down the Rabbit Hole. Uh, she has over 10 years experience of writing about technology and has been covering the blockchain and cryptocurrency space since 2017. So today, we're going to talk uh, about Web3, how it will reshape the media, and just before we start, it's a new format for us. So I'd like to remind our community that you will be able to write questions right here in the live chat, whether you're on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter, uh, we'll be able to answer them uh, live. So without further ado, Rachel, thank you for being with us. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, thank you again for having me, Constantine. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, sorry again that I'm doing this on my phone. Obviously, I'm, I'm traveling, so it's a bit tough right now. So apologies to everyone for that. Um, but yeah, thanks again for having me. So um, basically, I've been writing about blockchain and crypto since 2017. Um, I started just by being a contributor with Huffington Post. Um, I was interested in blockchain initially from the technology side of things and how it relates to supply chain management, which is, is when I published my first article on HuffPost um, in 2017 about that aspect. And then I kind of got sucked in from there and um, started writing for a few other outlets. I was a staff writer with Bitcoin Magazine for a while. Um, I was with Forbes for a few years, and now I'm full-time as a senior reporter with Cointelegraph, focusing um, still, uh, still on enterprise blockchain, but I guess we've seen the shift now to like, you know, NFTs and, um, real world applications of NFTs. So I, I am focused on those use cases as well. Um, but yeah, I've always been attracted to crypto and blockchain because of the technology side of things and less on prices. Yeah, that's exciting. And you're, uh, you're a media expert. That's why we, we try to gear the questions specifically about that. And, you know, not many people remember that far back in the 1980s, their world has seen like the first web one online newspaper, the Columbus Dispatch, where users can only read with no possibility to engage and react to, to pure content. I know it's kind of mind blowing right now where you can <laughs> interact in so many ways. And then we saw Web2 transition from coming from MySpace to social networks like Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Uh, and so it's a two way communication. Like, you know, there is some possibility, possibility to engage and to create content. And now we're talking about like Web3, where it's deemed as uh, creators uh, economy and uh, where creators actually can monetize their content. So as a media expert, how do you see like, you know, it's proliferating? How do you see it growing? What's what's changing? Yeah, so I mean, obviously, there have been changes, as you mentioned, um, between outlets. Um, what's interesting about Web3 is obviously creators get to own their um, their content for the very first time. So rather than having to put content on platforms where that data in your work doesn't actually belong to you, Web3 is kind of allowing creators to have these platforms where they can actually own their own data. So just for instance, because I was speaking with them yesterday, Lens Protocol is really, really interesting. Um, and they're, he, you know, they told me it's, it's somewhat like a Twitter interface, except there's a different tab rather than follow or rather than like, there's like a collector's tab. So basically you can add content there. You can collect content and, and have that in your, um, system. But anyways, basically with web three, it kind of just allows you to own the content that you created and it allows the creators to own their their content so yeah i mean that's what we're seeing and i think we're going to see more platforms like lens protocol emerge as web3 kind of advances mm -hmm. so from the practical standpoint like web3 is all about democratization decentralization you know which applies to media directly right and we might see like elon musk now trying to promote this free speech on twitter right and his plans of taking over the social network and like reduce the content moderation, right? Including even restoring Donald Trump's account, which is a very controversial topic. We're not going to get there. But in your opinion, um, in his tweet, when he said like the free speech is essential to a functioning democracy. So 
but we were seeing a lot of chaos still happening. Like, you know, so what do you, what do you see is going to uh, change, you know, when we are fully upgrading to Web3 practically? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be hard to censor anybody when we're on these Web3 platforms just because, I mean, that's the whole point of Web3 is there won't be censorship. Content creators will be able to, you know, like I said, own their content and pr produce whatever content they want to produce. So with these Web3 platforms, there won't be censorship options Um it's going to be decentralized. So I think we're going to start seeing those changes as well. So we, we've seen like, you know, the emerging like, you know, steps of the metaverse as we call it right now. Um, so what do you, how do you see the metaverse actually changing the media and how will you, how, how do you see like the users who engage in the media inside the metaverse? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. So right now we're seeing these metaverse ecosystems emerge like Decentraland or the Sandbox. And basically, you know, you have your avatar, you're in these virtual worlds, you have digital clothing, you can kind of customize who you are in these virtual worlds. And I think that as they advance, the media will have these kind of physical land spaces in these virtual worlds where people can you know, the avatars can come, they can visit, they can, they can read virtual clips of news. Like that's just how I envision it. Um, I can't think of any examples of that right now, but I think that as, you know, things become virtual and digital, like that's the way media is going to lean towards as well. Um, right now we're seeing just for, for, as an example, you know, these virtual shops and sandbox where avatars can go and they can actually shop for virtual clothing that are sometimes associated with physical items. So in terms of the media, that's kind of what I envision. I envision Cointelegraph having a physical location in one of these ecosystems where avatars can come and visit, buy Cointelegraph merch, um, mm -hmm. read the website there, um, you know, just walk up to, to a virtual system within that environment and get clips of news. Um, I also think that as these ecosystems evolve, media, it, it, you know, the, the long stories, which I actually tend to focus on, a lot of my articles are features and they're about 1,500, 2,000 words. I think we're going to also start seeing smaller clips of news as well, just because I think that that's the way we're, we're leaning towards as well. You know, we've got TikTok. It's, yeah, attention span is, is, is you know, slowing down. <laughs> Exactly. So I think within the these virtual ecosystems, we'll see kind of just shorter clips, maybe like a TikTok, but but not kind of just a TikTok for the sandbox, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So so you have, basically what you're saying, you you're, you're envisioning that the text will be less arc, like even more archaic. Like it's going to be more interactive content. It's going to be shorter. Uh, more straight to the point, you know, more condensed, like, you know, with, you know, like the information. Um, then I, I as, as the way I understood you also, there, there are different, you know, trajectory in terms of like how, how people will interact. Because I, we, we saw like another, that's, that's a good segue for another question. We saw in Reuters, like foresees that uh, like an increasing number of interviews held in the metaverse, right? Uh, one of the recent examples, I'm sure you've, you've seen it, like, you know, that was Financial Times when they actually interviewed uh, Meta's Nick, uh, and Meta's Nick Clegg inside the metaverse. And that's only the first one. We're probably going to see multiple very soon. Um, and people will be able, like, you know, to actually see the avatar of, you know, any host or a person who, who's been interviewed, right? And then have the presence inside the studios. You mentioned the physical location of Cointelegraph. Now imagine you're interviewing Elon Musk, you know, like inside the Cointelegraph metaverse or something like that. So maybe share like as a person who's doing, like who's interacting with people a lot, like generally throughout your career and write a lot of great articles. So how do you see this is gonna play out? Well, I mean, I think I think you're exactly right. I didn't see the Reuters interview that you mentioned in the metaverse. That sounds interesting. I need to look that mm -hmm. up after. But um, I, I think that you're right. Like we will have these avatars that define us through different traits. 
in the metaverse, and we will conduct interviews in the metaverse that people will be able to to watch and will be avatars. So, which is why I think the whole world of digital fashion, for instance, is really important because that's what characterizes your avatar. It's it's one way to characterize your avatar. So, I just think that these ecosystems are going to evolve, and we will be able to do things like have interviews in the metaverse and Elon Musk will have a very distinct looking avatar. Um, and, and, you know, maybe the clothes that these avatars wear will be NFTs or maybe they'll just be digital fashion, Mm -hmm. but, and then the traits as well associated with them, you know, as a journalist, there could be traits that are NFTs, like a journalist trait, for instance, or, you know, an entrepreneur trait. So I can totally envision interviews happening in the metaverse as avatars that define us. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that that's where we're leaning towards, but I haven't, I don't know any examples of that as of now. Yeah. It's, it's very futuristic. I I think for a lot of people who are still slowly transitioning from web to it's kind of sounds a bit crazy that let's imagine Rachel is going to wear amazing dress from Dolce Gabbana inside the metaverse and people as in a form of an NFT and people are so excited about that. They want to purchase it on the spot, right. And during the interview, even not waiting, like, you know, after to go into the website. So it's, it's becoming more and more interactive, like, and the gap between people, like how you can unite different communities and building is like, is also, you know, becoming like very narrow. Uh, so yeah, a lot of great examples, you know, so thank you for that. So, I mean, Cointelegraph to my recollection is probably number one right now by the unique visitors, right? So you have 17, 17 million unique visitors per month, correct? I think so. I'm not a hundred percent sure on the exact okay. number. But yes, we are obviously extremely popular. So, 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 what do you think like is going to change in your again? Let's let's speculate a little bit, like you know. So, in terms of reader engagement, right, and maybe in terms of advertising, like you know, the ad space, like with NFTs and metaverse. What will change is that the question with correct, reader? Correct. Right now, it's very traditional. So you have sponsors, articles, you have press releases, right? You have uh, promotions, like, you know, specific campaigns for project, right? You know, whether it's an exchange or, or a specific uh, lens as a project or any other projects that we can ever, you know, think of, right? They just buy ad space and maybe banners, right? You know, or mentioning whatever, right? Now, with the metaverse, it will definitely change in different formats. So let's speculate a little bit in your opinion. You can be as futuristic and as crazy in your predictions as you can. Yeah, no, I think it's going to become more accessible um, for sure. Media will become more accessible. Um, I mean, obviously, people will have to know how to navigate these environments. Um, I think that in terms of ads in the metaverse, you know, those could be if Cointelegraph had a location, a storefront in the metaverse and someone walked in, I mean, these could be virtual ads that someone walks up to and they can actually see those ads. And like you said, kind of click on that. And if there was something interesting, like it was a digital fashion, it was a brand ad, they may be able to buy that on the spot versus, you know, having to go through a bunch of links and websites to access that. Um, You know, obviously, things in the metaverse are virtual. So I think that that also adds an element. So if there was an ad for a brand, you know, a virtual item could pop up immediately versus something just on a website. But I think the things that we still need to work out in terms of advertising and just having these ecosystems advance are the technical details, because I don't know, I mean, Constantine, I'm sure you've spent time in the metaverse as have I, And I usually always have, and maybe it's just my computer, but there's always a technical issue associated with my time in the metaverse. And so in order for these environments to actually thrive and for media outlets to, you know, envision these new forms of media and and different types of advertising in there, the technical details really need to be worked out. And I don't know when that will actually happen and which ecosystem will happen in first, but, you know, going back to your original question, like I can imagine people walking into these storefronts for, um, 
you know, a media outlet and seeing advertisements, they can walk up to them. Everything is in 3D. But like I said, I just don't think that we're there yet in terms of graphics or technicalities. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so I think, you know, with this, like we want to open up uh, um, the questions to our audience. I've seen already several from YouTube now. So um, because we want to make it as interactive with our audience as possible, not only me asking you questions. Um, so we have uh, 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 a user of Ofchik Best from, from YouTube who's asking, do you think Web3 will decentralize crypto media? It's a general question. I think you partially replied, but let's see. Yeah, I, I think the whole point of Web3 is that, you know, it should be decentralized. So, I mean, it's an interesting question. Will it centralized crypto media. I think that it may make crypto media more popular, for instance, because a lot of these platforms are based on blockchain technology, right? Decentralized. So, sorry, sorry, just to specify. Decentralized, not centralized. Oh, decentralized. Okay, sorry. I heard centralized. I was like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> But um, yes, yeah, I do. I think it's going to allow people all over the world to have access to more media outlets, for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the whole point of Web3 in the metaverse is decentralization. And the platforms that are Web3 platforms, so we're not talking about Twitter, we're not talking about Instagram or TikTok, whatever. The whole point behind them is decentralization and, allow, and allowing creators to own their content and allowing people all over the world to experience that content um, without feeling like they have to give their data or personal information to these platforms. So, of course, it will result in more decentralization for crypto media outlets. Thank you. So another question from Ryu, again, from YouTube. So he's asking, hello, I have a question. Will newspapers and metaverse be mainly about ads or will they feature news and culture of that specific metaverse world? How do you envision that? I think he's asking, is it going to be more general or metaverse specific? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think we will see ads in the metaverse. I mean, we're already seeing that now in some of these ecosystems. But I think as the metaverse advances and if it's a media outlet, I mean, I think it's going to be similar to what we're seeing now, except picture that in the metaverse. So I don't know if there will be more or less ads for instance, but the ads that we see, I think, you know, everything will be more decentralized, if that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if there will be more or less advertising. I'm not really sure about that, but I can just imagine this kind of ecosystem where everybody has an avatar, where they can walk into these storefronts, where they can read different articles and news stories and look at advertisements if they choose to look at the advertisements rather than advertisements kind of popping up in the middle of them reading an article, which happens, you know, quite frequently now, unfortunately. But I think the metaverse will allow people, like if, if there was an advertisement, allow them for their avatars to actually go up there and read it versus having that advertisement like thrown in their face. Mm -hmm. No, thank you for that. So we have another question from Tina. She's asking, what improvements does crypto media need in your opinion? And is Cointelegraph going to enter the metaverse, I guess, soon or generally? <laughs> yeah. Well, in terms of if Cointelegraph is going to enter the metaverse, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I think if there's an opportunity for us to enter the metaverse, then yeah, of course. Um, if it sounds like a good opportunity, I can't imagine why not. Um, in terms, what was the other part of the question, Constantine? Uh, so the other part of the first part was, uh, what improvements does crypto media need in your opinion? Right. In terms of improvements, I see, you know, there's some coverage that doesn't fully go into entire stories. I mean, especially when we look at mainstream outlets versus crypto media outlets, mm -hmm. I think a lot of the times mainstream outlets focus on prices or they focus on negative aspects of the ecosystem and they don't fully understand the entire story. And, and I, I think that that's because they don't want to. But when it comes to crypto focused outlets like Cointelegraph, you know, we really dig deep. We really try to understand the story behind what we're writing about. Um, and we don't focus just on price. I mean, of course, we do have writers that write about the market. But there are so many other aspects to the crypto ecosystem aside from price. There's the technology aspect. There's 
you know, the advancement of Web3, like we're chatting about now, Constantine. So I think that in terms of improvements, I think people just need to do a little more due diligence sometimes and dig a bit deeper, get those details straight versus, you know, saying negative things or focusing on the price of crypto because, you know, right now that's kind of bringing the entire ecosystem down, I think. We need to focus on the positives. And there's so many positives to be had right now, even though we're in a bear market. I mean, we're still thriving. Web3 is still advancing, and that's because of blockchain technology. Um, so we've got to focus on the positives. I think, I think that's how crypto media can improve in general and, you know, just doing more research. I hundred percent agree. And I would do, I would add like really small aspects to it that uh, maybe not that small, even like fact checking. I think that's like, that's where web two is breaking and there is almost, there's not enough like technology. There are AI modules that are trying to fact check automatically, but it's still very challenging. And actually with blockchain and, you know, web three, there, there, there's, there's much more chances of actually to trace the source, you know, so that's another, I would say, benefit to what we're potentially going to see. Again, it's still utopian. It does not fully like exist. We still use Web2 media massively, right? So, uh, but it's possible, like uh, okay, bigger budgets, right? So that means others probably even maybe more sophisticated projects, more advanced, but who don't have these budgets like they're lost somewhere you know in, in nowhere <laughs> so. yeah i mean in terms of the advertisements that we see when it comes to like these crypto events and conferences that i go to you know the advertisements that are really in your face and sponsors i mean you know i think that's great but i also and i wrote an article about this a while ago when it was um the super bowl some of these advertisements are very misleading and they may give the wrong impression to non-crypto natives like oh invest in bitcoin today and become a billion billionaire tomorrow you know just messages kind of like that that were kind of displayed during the super bowl this year so i think that sometimes if you have a big budget and you want to advertise like yeah that's great just don't be misleading about it because non-crypto natives are looking at our space and they're looking at it from a perspective sometimes of how to get rich quick because they see those advertisements. I think that's sending the wrong message messages. And I think that the smaller projects that are out there building and working and may not have the budget to advertise, you know, that's totally fine as well. Um, but either way, I just think that the messages should should be positive and not misleading. Um, I think sometimes the companies with a bigger budget may go towards those misleading messages, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it would be nice to see kind of the smaller projects that are out there building advertise more in terms of the technology side of things versus just focusing on prices and exchanges that, you know, right now we're in, in a... <laughs> situation where some exchanges have kind of misled people very, very, very badly. And anyways, we've seen advertisements from them. And yeah, you know, we're, we're not going to go there, right? Right. <laughs> so, so there is a, another provocative question that I think it's worthwhile maybe discussing really briefly. So um, so uh, what I, I need to see uh, Klein, I think uh, from YouTube is asking, hi, Constantine, Rachel, you spoke earlier about Twitter. What are your thoughts on Jack Dorsey's Web5? Um, my, my quick gain on this, like, it's just, I, I don't know where the Web4 went. You know, we went directly to Web5. So I, I missed this moment. Maybe, Rachel, you know what, what we're talking about. <laughs> Actually, I, I don't, but I think that before we can focus on Web 4 or Web 5 or whatever, Web 6, obviously, <laughs> Web 3 point, you know, Web 3, we aren't there. We aren't there yet. Like, we're scratching the surface and it's being built right now. I mean, there are only a handful, like just a few examples that I know of in terms of Web 3 platforms that are being developed. And a lot of them are just now coming out of beta testing. So I just don't understand how we can jump from Web 5 when we when we haven't even finished Web 3, right? And yeah. it's like TikTok and Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn are still the mainstream. Yeah. I so, think that the idea was that to like to make it provocative so that people actually talk about it because, again, 
Um, he's, you know, he announced it like a decentralized platform that will provide users ability to control their own data and identity. But again, like, isn't that what Web3 is supposed to do actually, right? So let's just, as Rachel mentioned, let's just first make the Web3 solutions that already exist work and it, like talk about adoption, make sure that it's actually like we have positive uh, use cases and then talk about all the next things, right? Uh, we have three minutes left, so we're gonna like try to squeeze in two more questions. Uh, so Lee uh, from YouTube is asking, I think the role of the media in, in metaverse is to report stories happen only in the metaverse, or sorry, only in metaverse, rather than the real world. So do you agree with that? No, well, so I, you know, I think that there could be aspects like that. That's interesting, obvious. I mean, it actually is a very good question, but I think that as we advance in these physical, these locations in the virtual world become um, available for avatars to go and visit, I don't see, I see that more as covering all types of news, not just metaverse news, but there could definitely be some outlets that focus strictly on news in that metaverse. For instance, you know, um, new ecosystem players and events that have happened in the metaverse. I think safety is a massive topic right now in terms of the metaverse and keeping people's avatars safe from bullying and sexual harassment. I mean, I could definitely see an outlet reporting on stories like that in the metaverse. I mean, we've already seen that kind of in mainstream media. I read an article a few weeks ago about an avatar being raped. I, in you know, some sort of a, it was like meta, That's like testing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> testing a metaverse ecosystem and someone's avatar was raped and, you know, that was on a mainstream outlet, but I can totally see these metaverse ecosystems only reporting on metaverse news, but I don't think that's going to be the situation for all of these um, outlets. I see. Um, I, I think, you know, we're going to stop on this, you know, because again, like I'm, I'm sure there's this bunch of other questions, but I, I would prefer to leave a little bit for next time. Again, we really appreciate your time, Rachel. I know you're right now in the, in the middle of moving in the hotel. So we, uh, we want to also be cognizant of uh, your situation. And but generally, thanks, everyone, for joining, you know, Games Hub today and it's a crypto talk show. Uh, with our investors, partners, and remarkable personalities, just as Rachel is. And then listen to us at 3 p.m. UTC or 11 a.m. EST on YouTube live every Thursday. And we hope uh, to see uh, more, more of your great articles, Rachel. We're gonna, we implore people go to Cointelegraph, find all of your articles. I'm a personally, personally uh, an avid reader. Uh, it's an amazing quality. And again, thank you, thank you for your knowledge. Yeah, thanks, Constantine, and thanks to Games Hub for having me. I appreciate it. And thanks again, everyone, for joining. And thanks for bearing with me while I'm navigating myself through a hotel in L.A. Um, trying to find a decent workspace. So um, I appreciate everyone's, um, yeah, just everyone listening and tuning in today. Thank you. We appreciate the efforts, Rachel. <laughs> yeah, thanks. All right. Thank you so much. You have a great okay, day. Okay, have a good day. Bye. Thanks. Bye.